I am once again headed back to freaking New Jersey. Actually, somebody reached out to me after they saw one of my videos on Instagram or TikTok, I think. Sent me an email, said, hey man, I got a free place to tie up. I talked to him. He was nice enough to, uh, you know, let me have a slip for as long as I need it. Until, uh, you know, my buddy and I can come do the rest of the journey, uh, you know, from Cape May up to the, up the Delaware, to Chesapeake City, and then home. I would typically be pretty hesitant to trust a random person on the internet, but I talked to him and he seems pretty cool and I've actually had some people on the internet that have seen videos reach out and bail me out before, so I'm pretty thankful for the, uh, the helpful power of the internet used in the correct way a lot of times. Uh, there is still good people out there. But hey, I'm also the guy that bought a boat on Facebook Marketplace and uh, just hopped on it with some random dudes from Facebook and took it seven hours south down the ocean. So, I mean, sometimes you just gotta live a little, you know? Roll the dice, hope people are okay. You know, I actually had a pretty good, pretty well thought out plan that kind of fell apart in the 11th hour, but that's pretty typical of me. Like and subscribe if you wanna see more of my well thought out plans completely uh, backfire on me and fall apart. Popular opinion, Easy Pass is total complete robbery. Had to stop at a rest stop here and pay 20 bucks for one of these car chargers because I forgot mine. I am once again back here in Cape May. Tried a three hour car ride here to do about 30 minutes worth of work to bring the boat about 500 yards around and then tie it back up. Uh, but I'm really fortunate this guy John reached out, was generous enough to let me use you know his pier. Uh, we'll see how this goes. To be honest, I have not spent a lot of time at the helm you know, docking this boat and running this boat in tight spots. Uh, and she's heavy, you know, I've run boats my whole life, but uh, every boat moves a little different. So uh, we'll see, hopefully I don't take any piers out. Uh, first step to get some fuel while I'm here at the marina. And then uh, we'll, we'll see how this goes. So the boat is still floating. I hope she starts, I think it will. It's got two big 8D batteries in it. Uh, we are gonna hop on, make sure it's not sinking, make sure she starts, and then go get some fuel, and then we're out of here. I keep looking at this boat and thinking, oh my God, I can't believe I bought this thing, and I can't believe I still need to move it like about 120 more miles just to get her home. But I made the bed, now I gotta sleep in it. <laughs> I'm gonna try to remember the starting procedure here, I know. We'll turn the batteries to both here. Oh, I heard a beep. And then we are gonna go glow plugs for a little bit. Fired right up. Give her a little throttle here, let it warm up for a minute. It actually runs pretty good, not gonna lie. So to be honest, I have really not, oh God run this boat much especially at the stern with the stern steering it's a little different than it is on my other boat uh, so i have to get the boat just a couple slips over but it's going to be kind of my first uh first test run on my own so the steering here is a little different than my boat i drive with a hydraulic stick typically uh, but this one has a non-power hydraulic steering on this pole uh, this boat's real heavy it takes a lot of power to move her about it's going to be some getting used to and hopefully I don't take any of these pilings out. Uh, this does throttle, this does gear, and this does nothing. Alright, I guess there's nothing to do but do it. Throw dock lines and try not to wreck this guy's pilings. Here we go.
got it in there. That wasn't too bad. My level of relief is... It's up there. It's like 5.69 a gallon for diesel here to buy it on the water. Buying diesel in the water is always exponentially more expensive than it is on land, even though it's off-road diesel, meaning it doesn't have a road tax and it has red dye in it. I have no idea how much fuel this thing is going to take. I only burned about a quarter of a tank of fuel here on the way here. You know, in theory, I could make it back to Pasadena on one tank, but I want to leave some room for arrow uh, on my way back, so I'm just being safe since I'm here. I'm going to put some fuel on the boat because rather have it than not. This thing has been pumping for quite a while and uh, shows no signs of stopping soon and I can just hear cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. Uh, there's no such thing as a cheap boat, that's for sure, especially not one that runs on diesel. Uh, all things considered, this motor is pretty fuel efficient. It's a 300 horsepower lugger diesel, uh, so it's like a huge 11 liter diesel engine uh, that only makes 300 horsepower. So it's not running particularly hot, it's not burning a lot of RPMs, so it's not burning a lot of fuel, uh, but you know, you do a couple hundred miles a journey, you're gonna burn some fuel. Go drop a comment and see how many gallons you think this thing's gonna take. All right, we are full. We got these super fancy fuel caps on here that are just fence post caps. That's actually pretty common. My other boat has the same ones give this back and we'll figure out what the total damage is. For the grand total, $293 for 50 gallons of diesel. Goodness. That was so cool. These two guys, Ray and Denny, seen that I was down here at the marina and they came and dropped off some coffee and donuts for me for my, for my ride. Got to go out of here, out to the channel, around, and then in this other channel. It's not very far. It's 0.3 miles. Hopefully we don't run around, we'll see. So this boat does not steer real well, especially in reverse, which is pretty typical of a single screw, meaning one engine inboard boat. And this one being so heavy, it doesn't seem to matter what angle you have the rudder, she, uh, she don't wanna come about in reverse sure basically when you're steering single screw work boats especially heavy boats you basically gotta push the stern around put it in reverse give momentum and then use forward gear to push the stern whatever direction you're trying to go it definitely takes some getting used to and this boat not having power steering you gotta turn this handle about freaking seven times to get the rudder to go full lock I'm trying not to run over these guys' dredge pipe, too. I do not want to get a dredge pipe in my wheel. And it's really hard to see around this big-ass cabin. Have a safe journey. Thank you. I guess safety's a relative thing. My sign would say safety third. So we are out of the marina. And, uh... I am not familiar with really any of this stuff. Got to get the bottom machine to turn on. Which it has not yet. It's like from the 1980s, which in terms of boat technology is ancient. This was ambitious and a little stupid to try to uh, do this by myself. I know I have the skills to do it. It's just not going to make it any easier, that's for sure. But that's one of my downfalls that I'm too dumb to ask for help a lot of times, unfortunately. One of my worst qualities. And I don't know how much I trust this uh, bottom machine. It looks like it runs on dial-up. You really can't see it too well. It claims we have 12 foot, but uh, I don't know about this thing. Uh, film and drive a boat I really never have in a harbor I've never been so bear with me here sometimes I have to uh, lie to myself or remind myself depending on what I'm doing that uh, I know what I'm doing I have a federal captain's license that's scary I think we'll be fine I think there's some buffleheads out here 
just gonna wing it. Hopefully I'll destroy this nice guy's pier. I think it's that place right over here. That was about the worst docking job I've ever done, but the current here is crazy, and this boat doesn't have power steering, and it's my first time ever docking it. Whew. Oops, forgot. The stop button on here. Uh... She's in the slip safe, and we'll see her next week. I am truly kind of can't believe Today, I mean, I didn't tell anybody I was up here or anything, and I've run into four different groups of people today that were just driving around Cape May trying to find me to see if I was here or, or anything. And some, you know, a couple guys brought me donuts and coffee, and John let me tie up at his place, and you know, some other folks came down and, and saw me at the marina, came down just to meet me. It's pretty crazy. I, I really can't believe it sometimes, but I, I really am truly thankful for all these people. I really am, seriously. Well, I'm in town, I'm gonna check this place out called Sea Gear. Apparently they have all kinds of commercial fishing gear. All the locals say this is the place they go, all the local fishermen. And I might go get something to eat at this place called Lobster House, I think. Apparently it's pretty iconic to the area. With all the gloves you could ever want here. All kinds of stuff. I tell you what, <clears throat> that place didn't disappoint. I got some fried scallops. I could even see my boat tied up from the from the deck. I gotta hit the road. Another three-hour drive home. This is getting kind of old.